Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. We're going to be doing something a little bit different today. It's a topic that I have covered briefly in some videos before, but I want to talk a bit further about rev matching and heel and toe downshifting, which I suppose is an advanced manual driving technique. It's not something that everyone does. You certainly do not need to do it, but a lot of, a lot of enthusiasts like to do it. And I'm going to go into the reasons why. Okay, so why would you actually want to do rev matching or heel and toe downshifting? As I've said, not many people would ever be taught this, particularly not in the UK as part of your driving test. It's not an essential thing to do. Now, one of the main, well, there's several reasons, but one of the main reasons is reduced drivetrain wear. Now, if you think about this, what you've got, you've got an engine rotating at one speed that's connected to a gearbox that's connected to the wheels, and that can be moving, that input shaft of the gearbox can be moving at a different speed to the engine, depending on the gear you're in, depending on the speed you're going. So to better explain this, let's just do a little example. Let's say you're doing 60 miles an hour, and you're in sixth gear, and you're doing two and a half thousand RPM. If you maintain 60 miles an hour, but then you change down to fourth gear, the revs are going to go up. Let's just say they have to go to 4,000 RPM. So the normal procedure for this would be put the clutch in, move the gear shifter to fourth gear, and then you bring the clutch to the bite point to allow the engine to catch up to where it needs to be in fourth gear, let's just say 4,000 RPM. That takes a bit of time because you've got to wait for the engine to catch up, but it's also putting stress on the clutch because that clutch disc then has to kind of make up the difference in the speed. So an easy way to do it is to put the clutch in, rev the engine to 4,000 RPM, and then you're going to let the clutch out, kind of bring it to bite point just to make sure that it's exactly in the right place. Otherwise, if it's not, you're going to have quite a jerk forward and you can lock up the rear wheels in a rear wheel drive car or in a front wheel drive car or all wheel drive car, just put a ton of strain on the drivetrain, which you do not want to do. So always bring that clutch pedal to bite point still and you'll feel straight away if you've matched the revs correctly or not. So that's rev matching. Now for heel and toe downshifting, all you're doing here is you're rev matching and braking at the same time. So let's imagine a similar example. Let's say you're in fourth gear this time on track doing 80 miles an hour and you're coming into a corner and you're gonna be heavy on the brakes and you wanna be into second gear. Now you could literally, if you wanted to, put the clutch in, just grab second and kind of bring the clutch out to bite point. But what you've got to think is a lot of weight transfer going on the car at that point, because you've got heavy, heavy braking. So a lot of the weight is shifted forwards off the rear axle specifically here in my example. So when you bring the clutch out, if the engine speed and the input shaft of the gearbox are not matched up, you're going to have a speed difference and that clutch just needs to take some of that strain. So it's going to basically put even more weight over the nose and it's going to potentially lock up the rear wheels. You see this happen quite a lot, actually. I've seen a lot of Nürburgring onboard videos where people aren't heel and toe downshifting and you can hear the wheels locking up when they're letting out the clutch too hard. And basically all you need to do is rev the engine to where it needs to be in those lower gears to get around that sort of issue. And it also helps the, the balance of the car to stay more steady because you're not suddenly putting strain kind of into the car when you're lifting the clutch out to the bite point. So yeah, it's essentially a case of you would put your foot on the brake as normal, you go for the clutch, and then when you want to change down to gears, in this case, let's say we did fourth to third, so you'd blip the throttle for where the RPMs need to be in third, let the clutch out, blip it again for where it needs to be in second, let the clutch out. And that just maintains much better balance over the car, and as I say, really reduces the risk of that rear axle locking up. Now this isn't the easiest thing to kind of get your head around with just words explaining it, so let's go out on the road and we'll see how it's done. So before you even get into heel and toe downshifting or rev matching, there's a few steps that I think are really important. The first of which is footwear. Now this can have a pretty profound effect on how well you can control pedal movements and how easily you can do a throttle blip or a heel and toe downshift. Um, I personally quite like a lot of the skateboarding shoes because they tend to give really good feel through the sole of the shoe. You don't have to go crazy, you don't have to spend loads of money. Um, but if you were kind of spending a bit more, some of the shoes I'd recommend are from Pilotti shoes. I've actually got a pair of those and they are fantastic. And there's some kind of clever science that goes on in the sole to allow you to kind of spread an even load across the pedal, which is great. And you can really feel that working. So anyway, let's go on to step two, which is about driving position. So step two then is driving position. I think this is possibly one of the most important because you need to make sure that you've got a very clear movement, particularly in your legs for this. I tend to like a bit of a bend in the leg like that. You want to be not too far away from the steering wheel. Again, a bit of a bend in the arm to reach it. That's what I find is the optimum position. You definitely don't want to be really close and sat on top of the kind of the, the pedal box. Particularly in a car like this, which is lower, you are kind of more set back anyway, so that's easier. But you can see from here, I can quite easily kind of move over and access the pedals with ease. And there's plenty of space in the pedal box, even with sort of larger feet like I have. Some cars do have much 
narrower pedal boxes. I find that in my E30, for example, I actually usually have to wear a smaller pair of shoes just to kind of, kind of get the heel and toe movement in there. So the third step then, and I think this is quite closely linked to driving position, is foot movement in the pedal box. Now, for a rev match, this is pretty straightforward, and we will go into this in more detail in a minute out on the road, and I'll have a foot cam set up so you can see properly. But just as a quick kind of thing here, a rev match is very simple because all you're going to do is put the clutch in and blip the throttle to where it needs to be. Now, for a heel and toe, this is a bit more complicated because it actually involves your foot moving around. Now, the word heel and toe would originally have come from the sort of heel of your foot hitting the throttle and the toe of your foot hitting the brake pedal. But these days, a lot of cars just don't have pedal boxes set up like that. You can see in this Z4, we've got quite a big gap there between the brake pedal and the throttle pedal. So really, you've got to kind of balance your foot half on the brake pedal and then you have to rotate it around and hit the throttle pedal like that to blip the to kind of blip the rpms and at the same time you're going to be putting the clutch in like that if you're out on the road not doing track driving the sort of amount of brake pedal pressure you need is much less and in that first sort of inch or so of pedal travel on the brake pedal it's pretty soft you'll know that if you've driven a lot of manual cars so really you have to kind of be able to balance your foot very very well when doing the blip otherwise when you go for that blip the whole car is going to jerk forward quite violently it's definitely best to try this uh, at a standstill first so you can kind of get an idea for how the foot movement needs to work and also it's much safer to do that at a standstill before you go out on the road too okay then so out on the road let's let's see how this kind of works then now, I do want to definitely add, this isn't something you need to do. Like, I know it's something a lot of enthusiasts talk about a lot, me included. And that's because really it adds like another level of engagement to driving. And I just find it very satisfying, I suppose, to kind of be using all three pedals at once and kind of letting the engine work well with the gearbox and uh, yeah, the drivetrain in general. So, first of all, rev matching then. Well, I'm in fourth gear at the minute, doing about just under 2000 RPM. And let's say I want to change down to third and I don't rev match. It's going to be clutching. There's the bite. Now the revs are up to where, where they need to be. So you see that took a second or two. If we go back to fourth. And then what we're going to do this time is we're going to do the clutch in and then rev match. So clutch in, blip, clutch out. And that one I actually fell a little bit below. It's generally easier, particularly in this car, when you're higher in the RPMs, just because it's got a very light flywheel, it, it drops down to idle very quickly. So you can see that one's a bit closer and much quicker. Now it doesn't matter if you don't get the RPMs exactly right. Within a couple of hundred is usually enough, but they don't need to be 100% exact. See how much quicker that is? So just to talk a little bit more about how it affects drivetrain wear then, if I was to change down to second now and not rev match, the clutch basically has to match that difference in speed between the input shaft and the gearbox and the output shaft of the engine. So there will be a delay and that is gonna add some wear to the clutch disc. And you can see, if I'm bringing that out now, I can also feel the car slowing down as I do that. So I probably lost about five miles an hour of speed there. Whereas I could just rev match speed stays the same nowhere on the clutch so it's much nicer to do it that way and not to mention of course as well it does keep the car much more balanced because you don't have a weight transfer over the nose due to the deceleration It is something you need to get used to with each car. Every car's throttle responds differently. As I mentioned, this car has a light flywheel, so the throttle response is very good. It's very quick to get up RPMs. But it's not always the case. I, for example, in my E30, the throttle response is much slower. I've got to do a much longer blip to kind of get it up to where it needs to be. And ultimately, it just takes practice. You know, I, I couldn't get in this car and get the rev match right 100% straight away. It does take a few hours of driving at least really to be able to get it properly dialed in. And another thing of course is engines respond differently when they're cold. 
When this car's cold, it's not the easiest thing to actually get the rev match perfectly correct. The revs tend to fall back quite quickly and it just doesn't, doesn't really like to respond as quick as it does when it's fully up to temperature. But it's totally different when it is. Okay, so next up then, heel and toe down shifting. This is much more difficult than rev matching is. For a start, you do need a pedal box that is kind of set up in the right way, I suppose. I've had cars before that the pedal box just isn't. The, you know, for example, the brake pedal is much higher than the throttle pedal is at resting position. And it just means getting on the, on the throttle for the blip, you need to be pressing the brake pedal much harder because it just doesn't have enough pedal travel really to align the pedals, if you like. Most BMWs I've driven uh, seem to have very good pedals for heel and toe downshifting, so that's always a plus, but you know, I can't say that would be the case for every single one. So as I previously mentioned, um, you know, the heel and toe downshifting is really a combination of braking and rev matching. It's generally easier if you're carrying a little bit of speed. Right now I'm only doing about 30 miles an hour, so if I go for it, it's not going to be the easiest thing in the world just because I'm not going very quick, but you can see the kind of movement there. And you've, what, what you've really got to try and do, particularly if you're on the road, is be able to maintain that constant pedal pressure on the brake pedal when you go for the blip. And that's really what takes the practice. And if the brakes are heavily servoed as well, that can make it more difficult. Okay, so let's just kind of run through the movement again then. We're going to be getting onto the brake pedal and then we're going to be rotating the foot round to blip the throttle. So I'm in third gear now, just under 3000 RPM. We'll just bring the speed up a little bit more. So there's the brake pedal. And it's always important to bring the clutch to the bite point, as I mentioned before. You, you don't want to bring the clutch all the way out because if the rev match is slightly off, and well, particularly if the revs are below where they need to be, you do risk locking up the rear wheels and that could cause you to spin out. You don't really need to worry about the revs being higher than they need to be because you just it doesn't matter as much if the engine is spinning faster than the rest of the car just because there's kind of less rotational mass in the engine. It will very quickly just drop down to where it needs to be without very with sort of very little jerking. So that's pretty much it. I mean, once you know the basics, it's really just a case of going out and practicing it. This isn't something you're going to be able to just do straight off the bat if you've never done it before. And as I've also mentioned, it can, it can vary really quite a lot in technique depending on the car. What I found with this Z4 is I really had to kind of rotate my foot a lot more off to the right hand side just due to the gap between the brake pedal and the accelerator pedal. Whereas, for example, in my E30, the pedals are much closer together and you just don't have to do that. You can really just roll between the two. So it's much easier in that car. In fact, that car is probably one of the easiest cars I've ever driven in terms of heel and toe downshifting. So yeah, um, I hope you found this useful. Definitely go out and practice it. Don't be put off if you can't do it straight away. There's also plenty of kind of good driving simulator rigs you can get if you're into any of the gaming side. That's a really good place often to get used to the technique. So I definitely recommend doing that. Um, but yeah, hope you found the video useful. That's all from me. I'll see you in the next one.